So we're carrying on talking about the uh, Cubase tips and tricks. So in this episode, I want to discuss what exactly is the control room and how awesome it actually is. And I also want to show you guys a little bit about workspaces. So yeah, let's dive in and have a look. So a lot of you guys have actually asked in my videos, what are these plugins that are loaded on this kind of mystery channel on the side here? Um, and if we actually open up my mixer and run through all of the channels in this track, you'll notice that that, that channel is not actually visible on the mixer. So what that is, is that's the control room. It's actually external from the project mixer. Um, if I go ahead and close this project, um, you'll, you'll notice that the control room plugins are exactly as is. So like I said, the control room is external from the project and it's a nice way of being able to have certain, you know, plugins that you may be using for analysis and reference and that kind of thing. Or in my example, I'm using Sonoworks reference on the control room over here. And why is this important for something like Sonoworks is when we render the project, it's not going to render in any of these control room plugins. So, you know, for examples in Sonoworks where we've got the plugin actually altering the sound, we don't want to imprint that onto the project. Um, so I believe that the plugin actually has got a, a detector to detect when you're uh, exporting and stuff like Ableton and that. But in Cubase, I find it's very handy to just have it on the control room. Um, and then you don't forget these things. It's loaded on every project as you start up and it's external from your mixer. So this means that, you know, your uh, analysis and levels on your stereo out channel are going to be accurate um, because the plugins do kind of change. Uh, the specifically Sonoworks reference does change the volume over here by 6.5 dBs. But anyway, so back to the first project um you'll notice i've got a couple of plugins that i use here quite regularly um you know throughout my projects i find curve eq is a very very nice analysis tool because you get to imprint a kind of frequency response from a different track like a, a professional project or something like that or another project in an album mix or something that you might want to kind of reference to get a similar sound throughout um, then Levels is a nice plugin to kind of keep uh, your dynamic range, LUFS and that kind of thing in check. Um, stereo Field as well, very cool. Um, and then I've got my Sample Grabber. So what this does is this is the plugin that sends audio to Flux Studio Sessions, which is kind of external from the DAW. Um, I'm going to uh, hold off on the explanation of that for this tutorial because it's got nothing to do with Cubase actually. Um, and then Sonoworks, like I said, on the control room. So how do we set this up in Cubase? So I know some guys don't actually like using this because it does uh, fiddle with your output settings. Um, but if we press F4, we're actually opening up our audio connections uh, tab. And this allows us to, you know, change how our audio is routed throughout. So you'll notice here far on the right hand side, we've got the control room. And to turn it on, you use this little on off over here. So I'm not going to disable it because I, I want to retain all those plugins that are on there, obviously. But, you know, some people that may have issues when starting out with Cubase for the first time, when they turn that off, suddenly their stuff starts working. But it's because you may have to just punch in your actual uh, audio outputs from your sound card in over here. So you'll notice what I've done here is I've got my main monitor outputs going through the control room. And then I've got another set of outputs over here going line three and four. So this set of outputs is unaffected by this rack over here. And I can actually apply effects over here to that. You know, say for example, like a limiter or something, because this is actually my recording channel or my headphones channel. So say for example, um, I could actually load Sonoworks on here as well and apply the curve for the headphones um, to that channel. Um, but I don't do it because this is the actual, this is actually the channel I use to record out um, for you guys to hear on YouTube. So that's essentially what the control room is over there. Um, it's a nice kind of external from the project uh, channel that you can load effects and stuff onto for analysis, reference, that kind of stuff. Um, and the cool thing is it kind of ret retains the settings and stuff as you're loading uh, different projects, you know. So it's cool to keep like your levels in check throughout multiple different projects and that kind of thing. Um, and then again, to turn that on, it's over here, F4 to access this menu over at control rooms, you switch it on and you just make sure that these are your main monitor outputs and you assign your plugins as you wish over there. So I want to talk about workspaces. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to remove these two workspaces that I've got here. 
because they're dealing with dual screen. I want to kind of show you guys um, uh, while recreating some hotkeys for myself to use while shooting videos. Um, so this is a kind of two for one. So over here on the, on the top left hand tab, you've got uh, file, edit, project, audio, etc., and you've got a workspaces menu. So what this means is a workspace is essentially a display setting. So it's all your plugins and everything layout how you want it at that moment. And the cool thing about the workspaces within Cubase is it automatically assigns hotkeys on your numpad to cycle through those different workspaces. So why is this handy? So say for example, you know, we do a lot of like mixing work and we wanna be able to, you know, let's say for example, have our mixer open, um, but not all the way, you know, I still wanna be able to see my control room settings there. So let's say I want to have like a layout like this with my mixer and I wanna have curve EQ along the top here and I wanna be able to see levels as well. Um, and then let's see the mixer as well. So let's say for example, like I wanna be able to quickly recall this kind of like layout that I've set up um, and then jump back to a previous layout. I'm actually just gonna pop myself here and then jump back to like a previous layout. Um, what we do is we go over to the workspaces and then we go add workspace and we can name it over here. So you've either got the ability to create a workspace specific to this project or a global workspace. I'm not quite sure why you would do it for a specific project, um, but it could be for, you know, big projects where, you know, teams are working together and that kind of stuff. But global is generally the one that I go for. Um, and let's just call this workspace one. You can call it whatever you want to, mixing, whatever. And... So now if you go over to your workspace, you'll notice that it's now added that to that list of workspaces and it's got alt numpad one to recall this. So now what we can do is let's say for example, exit these and now we've got our like project window open here and we can add this as a workspace. And let's just call this project. Now what we can do is we can use alt numpad one and numpad two to jump between those different workspaces. So this is a nice way of quickly being able to dive through all the multiple hundreds of windows that Cubase has and access those advanced features within a very fluid workflow. And then say, for example, we want to create like another one where we've got like the mixer down here. Just zoom out a bit on both of these. Then we can see like everything together. Um, and then let's say we want curve EQ here. And now we can actually resize this as well. And then let's say add workspace here. Um, maybe open up like another plugin, like a synth or something. Um, and now we can add this as a workspace. Call this synth plus curve. Now, now we can jump through all of them very quickly. Nice. Okay, so this is moved now. We can go pop it there. And now we can go workspaces, update workspace not looking at these kind of like control room plugins because i mean these are kind of always at the ready um but you know when you when you have to dive into a mixer with like hundreds of uh, inserts and stuff having to find that same one every time being able to assign a workspace to that uh is very very handy um say for example uh like i said kick sampler and the bass instrument here and kick sampler there and now we can go and we also want like a lfo tool don't think there's actually one on this channel oh there is open up an lfo tool kick sampler and the bass instrument and then we can call this we can make this like another workspace you know Big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel.